Beyond the Mic with Sean Dillon. We're joined on the star line by a stand-up comedian, actress, and author. Her memoir, Who Do I Think I Am, kicked off a 60-city comedy tour. We welcome Angela Johnson. Hello, thank you for having me. Angela, let's go beyond the mic. In your book, you cover an amazing life, well-lived, from suburban kid, NFL cheerleader, to comedian. Born in San Jose, how did those early years help you with your comedy today? Uh, you know, I draw a lot on how I grew up, my family, my life. I mean, that's what I talk about is real life stuff. My number one goal when I'm on stage is not just to make people laugh, but it's to connect with people like on a human level. So I like to talk about things that I know everyone in the audience either has experienced themselves or they know someone who has experienced it. So what makes something funny for you? Um, You know what? I laugh a lot. So I just enjoy laughing. Anything from like funny memes on Instagram to, I'll, I'll tell you, it's easier for me to say what I don't think is funny. What's not funny? Uh, when people fall, I get so uncomfortable where like my best friend, if somebody falls, including me in front of her, she's going to laugh for a good five minutes. But if somebody falls in front of me, I get so like, oh, my God, do we need to call an ambulance? Like, what? I cannot handle it when people fall in front of me. You've done ad campaigns. You've starred in TV and films. Where do you find your happiness? Where's that sweet spot where you think, gosh, I love doing this? You know, it's it's a little bit of all of it. I mean, I love acting. There's no there's no feeling like walking onto a sound stage and you can like smell like it smells so familiar because they just built it the night before so it smells like the wood the paint the everything you're like oh my gosh i'm here making movie magic like this is unreal like i love that feeling but then i also love the feeling of being on stage saying a joke that i wrote that i thought of from my own life and feeling the audience laugh and feeling that energy that instant gratification there's nothing like that angela johnson comedian joins us beyond the mic three podcast a new book in a full merchandise line when do you have time to sleep you know i do enjoy my sleep and i like to prioritize my sleep but it's balance man we gotta learn how to balance no matter what you're doing in your own life you gotta balance make time for yourself and i definitely do that so i'm quick to say no to things today oh you want to come out to this event i'm like no girl i need my sleep who are the comedians that inspired you growing up oh man let's see ellen degeneres i love her storytelling ability she's the one that i like to say she sneaks her material on you because she's just having a conversation and then all of a sudden you're in the middle of her act and you're like oh wow she got me like i totally didn't realize it like she's just so conversational i love that i love brian regan he's so silly he makes me laugh george lopez i love the stories um i like storytellers for sure Angela, it's time for the Rocking Eight. Eight random questions answered with the first thing that comes to your mind. There is no pressure. Okay. Number one thing on your bucket list. Um, I want to go to Thailand. Best place you ever visited in Europe. In Europe. Um, well, Spain. Yeah. Person you want to work with, but you haven't yet. Sandra Bullock. Angela, why is the love of a dog so unconditionally wonderful? Oh, my God. They're angels. They're angels from heaven. Are you good or bad at changing diapers? I don't have much uh, experience changing diapers, so I would say I'm medium. If you find a penny on the ground, do you pick it up or you keep walking? Um, I would usually keep walking because that's disgusting and it's dirty and I don't want my hands dirty and to smell like pennies after. But just recently, I started picking them up as signs from God. <laughs> Would you join Witness Protection Program for your own safety if it meant leaving your fame behind? Oh, yes. Yes. What's the most annoying habit of your husband? Oh, just one? <laughs> you have to pick one. <laughs> oh, man. Well, the first one that comes to mind is he leaves his shoes right in the middle of a doorway or a walkway. So as soon as you open the door, his shoes are right there. Like not off to the side, like a normal human, just right in the middle of the walkway. So what's yours? I'm perfect. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's time for the back half with Angela Johnson beyond the mic. Comedy clubs are closed. The world shut down. How did you survive the pandemic quarantine? I mean, what did you do with this time? Oh, I started a garden. And I started cooking because I'm not real, real good at cooking, but I started 
following recipes and cooking. I started meditating. I really took some time for myself because like you said early on in the interview, like I'm very busy going here and there doing a bunch of things at once. And this was like the first time in my life that I got to do nothing but what I actually wanted to do. And so I, I did a lot of that. Gardening was probably my favorite. What's your favorite thing to grow? Uh, mm, I love my salsa ingredients because I love making salsa. So any of the peppers, jalapenos, serranos, um, and then tomatoes and onions. Your podcast, Nights the Roundtable, tackles difficult questions. Why was doing this important for you? So Nights of the Roundtable started um, during COVID, actually, the quarantine. My husband and I and our best friends, we would have these really deep, intimate conversations, talking about God, faith, talking about um, our deconstruction and reconstruction of all of these ideas. And they were such good conversations that we were like, I wish more people could hear what we're talking about. And so my husband was like, let's just do it as a podcast. And then we did. And then next thing you know, so many people found a community with us and felt seen, felt heard. And so that's how it started. And it's still going strong. You told a friend recently to, quote, set an intention for the year, unquote. So what's the intention you have for you this year? My intention for this year is to be connected, connected to God, connected to my family, connected to myself. I think a lot of times we get so busy with work, with your kids, with uh, whatever it may be, with social media, but that a lot of times we disconnect subconsciously. And so I want to stay in the moment, stay present, and stay connected to myself, to God, and the people that matter. God and family are very important to you. Angela, how has your family strengthened you? Oh, my family's everything. I love to lean on them, and I talk to my sister multiple times a day, and we grew up best friends. We're still best friends. I love to share all my special moments with my family. I love to make them proud. I love to just see them light up and to know that I, I'm a part of that for them. They, they're my everything. So why is Unlikely Heroes your charity of choice? Unlikely Heroes is an anti-human trafficking organization. I didn't know much about trafficking growing up. I grew up in a neighborhood where there was a lot of prostitutes at the corner. And growing up, we just thought like, oh, those ladies, those are bad ladies. But then we educated ourselves and learned that a lot of times these women are trafficked and forced to be in these positions, um, whether it's domestically here in the United States or abroad. Um, So my husband and I have supported this organization who restores women and children from sex slavery and gives them hope, gives them therapy, gives them safety, and gives them their future back. Comedian Angela Johnson joins us beyond the mic. How does your husband help you develop comedy? Uh, My husband helps me in many ways, just by speaking. And then I go, oh, this is going in my act for sure. But also, he... (laughs) (laughs) Like packing a bag. Exactly. Like, thank you. Thank you for all of this material. Um, My husband is very fashionable. And he will pick out my outfits for me because I would wear jeans and tennies every day if I could. But um, he will, like, pick out my outfit, make sure I look good. If I have, like, a press interview or I'm going to an event, my husband is, like, making sure that I I show up looking nice. And so he, he helps me there as well. If you're enjoying these conversations, please check out another Beyond the Mic episode to find more actors, artists, and people you need to know. We'd also appreciate a like and subscribe on the Good Pods app. We all have passion in things, hobbies. I like talking to people, hearing their great, incredible stories. Where do you get your passion from? You know, that's a good question because I've often asked myself, am I passionate about anything? Because I enjoy doing a lot of things. But then I guess you have to define what that even means. Because I could say like, oh, I want to be an actress. Like that is my dream and that's all I want to do. But am I in acting class every day? No. Am I studying all the classic movies and classic actors? No. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, so does that mean I'm not passionate? So I've, asked it, I've often asked myself, what am I passionate about? And what does it even mean to be passionate? So I feel like that's something that I'm still working on discovering for myself. How did your time at the DNs of college prepare you for today? You know what? I'm surprised I even went to college. I'll be honest. <laughs> 
<laughs> I went to junior college for a few years and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And it was there that I realized that I wanted to be an actress and move to Hollywood. And so that's what I did. Um, but definitely while I was at junior college, I had to retake all the classes in high school that I never paid attention for. So it was really just like high school 2.0. You have a choice with film, TV, even voice acting. What are you happier doing? Feature films or television? You know what? I would say because I'm a creature of habit, I love comfort. I love stability. I love some routine. I would say a TV show because you know your schedule. You know when you're on hiatus, when you're on a break, and you know when you're working, and you know where you're working, you know where your location is, you know where your parking spot is, and it's like, you know, having a regular job. You show up, and then you do a job, you go home. I kind of have a little bit of just, you know, uh, Ability and, and routine. I, I enjoy a good routine. When you're doing film, you're like, you're filming here, you're there, you're in this city, that city. Like, you never know. Angela, how has comedy changed for you for the better and the worse since you started? I mean, obviously, it's a different time for comedy now with, you know, the cancel culture and everything. I think um, the difference for me is we just have to be so aware that what we're saying is probably going to offend somebody. Even if you're not saying something offensive, it's probably going to offend somebody. And now the issue is, is that one person going to be loud enough to ruin your life? Or is it just going to be like, that's a part of comedy. Like, yeah, you're going to be offended. Like if, if this doesn't resonate with you or if actually it resonated too much, so now you're upset. So that's kind of the world that we're in now. That's how it's changed for me. And, um, I've never been like an edgy comic or somebody who's trying to be like shock value. I've never been that. So I've never had a fear of offending people because I don't like to offend people. But it's interesting now that something that I say, someone will be offended. Now, there's a difficulty of content and how the world has changed how you create comedy today. Could some members of the Asian community feel offended when you're just given a window to what you see when you're in a nail salon, it's one of your most popular bits, but people might get offended. Right. It's a, to me, it's, I'm a storyteller and I share my personal real life experiences with people and they're pretty accurate, which is why they resonate with so many people. And, but like you said, like sometimes people get offended. Sometimes they don't like, sometimes people really get it and like don't understand and they don't get it. But even with, you know, like the widow community, like I had a joke about how I saw um, my fear of death. First of all, I have a fear of death and I talked about that. And there was one day where I thought my husband died and I walked through the whole scenario of how that day happened and come to find out he didn't die. He was asleep on the couch downstairs and it's the whole story that I share. And then I got um, widows that were offended by that. And they're like, you can't tell jokes like that. Like I actually lost my husband and that's too hurtful. And I'm like, wait a minute. So I can't share my own life either because that could offend somebody like my fear of death that's an actual fear that i have like this is an actual story that happened where i thought my husband i can't even talk about this because even that's gonna offend people so it's not just like oh different ethnic groups or different you know sexualities like it's just anybody could be offended at anything angela when you're on tour what should people expect i love to relate to people connect with people bring joy to people and i think people can expect to feel joy, to leave my show feeling like a little bubbly inside, feeling like their energy vibration has lifted a little bit. And and I always want people to take that joy home with them to their family, to their friends, to their workplace. And that joy would just stay and marinate in that city that I was in for that night telling those jokes. Like that's what I always um, hope and expect for people to experience when they come to a show of mine. Why does making people laugh feed your soul? I don't know. It's that, it's that energy. It's that, you know, the, the gratitude of it all. I say a joke, people laugh and it's like their laughter is the gratitude and they give it to me. And then I give them another joke. So it's like a circle of gratitude going over and over. I love it. And you love helping small business. It's a habit you have helping others. How does helping others and giving back help you? You know, I feel like I've been blessed in my life that I I want everyone to experience that. I want everyone to 
experience what it's like to win, what it's like to hear the word yes. Yes, we want you. Yes, we want your product. Yes, we want your business. I want everyone to experience that yes because um, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, so anything I can do to help people, I, I enjoy doing that. How do you want to inspire the next generation of great comedians, especially from the Latino community? I want people to see me and see themselves and see, hey, if she can do it, I can do it. Even if we don't have the exact same dream, but to see that I started from humble beginnings and am at where I'm at today with um, having the audacity to dream big dreams and then working hard and not giving up, believing in myself and not self-sabotaging that with, you know, negative thoughts because sometimes we can be our worst enemies. So I would love if people see me, see my life and see themselves and say, I can do it. Angela, what's your next project? My book. That's what I'm focusing on is my book. Who do I think I am? Stories of Chola wishes and caviar dreams. And this whole year I'll be touring, promoting it. And that's my baby right now. That's what I'm working on. It's time for one big question with Angela Johnson beyond the mic. You said on social media, referring to your grandma, quote, I wish I could have a conversation with her now knowing what I know having matured and evolved to where I am today, unquote. What's the one question you want your grandma to answer? Ooh, wow, that's a good one. Um, I feel, I don't know what one question would be. I feel like I would just get to know her human, not just grandma. Because we look at people in our lives, whether it's grandma or it's mom or it's dad, and they're, that's who they are to you. It's just dad. That's dad. But we don't pause to think, no, that's like a real person who grew up, who had best friends in high school, who had crushes on girls, who got their heart broken, who got fired from a job, who felt all of these human emotions that you feel, this person felt. I would love to just get to know my grandma on a human level, like she was just my friend, like not grandma, just my friend. And I would love to just have a conversation with she wants to work with Sandra Bullock, walks past pennies on the ground because they're dirty, and wants you to buy her memoir, Who Do I Think I Am? Comedian Angela Johnson, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. So this was a great conversation. Thank you for having me. And that, my friends, is Beyond the Mic.